Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Aaron Sheldrick, and I work for Reuters. Nearly five years after the <coughs> Fukushima nuclear disaster, the fallout from the catastrophe, sorry, excuse me, continues to impact Japan's energy situation. To date, utilities have only managed to restart one nuclear reactor, despite strong government support for rebooting the sector. And a significant in, uh, ramp up of units is likely to be fraught and time consuming. Taku, Takuya Hattori is a senior advisor of the Japan Atomic Industrial Forum and served as president of the industry body between 20, uh, 2007 and 2015. Prior to joining JAIF, Mr. Hattori served as Executive Pri Vice President at Tokyo Electric Power Company, the operator of the destroyed Fukushima nuclear plant. He has 36 years of experience in nuclear power generation at TEPCO, a company much maligned for its response to the disaster. Uh, he has kindly agreed to come and talk to us about the future of nuclear power in Japan uh, and how it is a necessary part of Japan's energy mix. He will give a brief presentation uh, and I'll open the floor up to questions afterwards. Uh, before I hand over to Hattori-san, please make sure you've turned off all your mobile devices and please show your appreciation to our speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alon, a very the kind introduction. My name is Hattori. And before starting my presentation, uh, I would like to confirm the, the distributed materials. The first is the handout of the copy. And next is the uh, Jive Bloche. This is uh, our organization. And the third is uh, the very detailed the, the Japan for the nuclear power station for the database. And today I would like to uh, my, uh, the title of my presentation is Energy Situation and the Role of Nuclear Power in Japan. And the contents of the today's talk is uh, as shown here. And uh, I prepared too much for the material and I will skip. The and next is uh, uh, the introduction of JIFE. Japan Atomic Industrial Forum is established in 1956 the non-profit and private organization and membership in the 450 organization. And the chairman of the, our organization is Takashi Imai. You might well know the honorary chairman of Japan Business Federation. Now, our mission is to promote peaceful, use de peaceful development and utilization of nuclear energy. And activities now we are focusing three pillars. One is public acceptance, the second international cooperation and the human resource development. These, all of these are the current issue of the Japanese uh, nuclear industry. And also I would like to talk about uh, the JICC, the JIF International Cooperation Center. This, is, this was established in uh, 2009. The, the mission is cooperation for newcomer countries. They're supporting so many countries now, they are planning to start for the nuclear program. And we, Japan, as a developed country, uh, the nuclear developed country, we are fully, fully supporting the, their program. The main activity is the human resource development and the establishment of the relevant laws and regulation and public acceptance, and also the preparation of the necessary infrastructure. And next, uh, the, I would like to talk about the Fukushima accident. There are uh, so many areas. This is a very few, uh, very only the key issue. Still, 100,000 local people have been suffered as evacuees and, and preventive measures of the contaminated water leakage. This might be the main uh, risk for, of the current uh, Fukushima Daiichi. And the contaminated water has been purified and stored in the storage tanks, um, almost uh, uh, 600,000 tons of such a huge amount of the water is stored. The mostly the clean up, uh, clean up and purified, but it's very difficult to discharge this water. The, we need for more talk with the fishermen union. This is a very political issue. 
The third, uh, next is the decommissioning of the damaged reactors has been deployed uh, based on the mid and long term roadmap. This was uh, the joint activity with the government, but the so called uh, how to access to the uh, debris, the core, the melted core debris, that is the most difficult issue. We still we don't know about where this debris is located and what's the configuration and no information we have not uh, we have not yet get and we are now trying to using the robot how to access how to take out and where uh, should be stored and final disposal there's so many issues we have and also that the contamination of the surrounding environment is in progress and two uh, municipal had already lifted up their, their evacuation uh, order, but the people who are coming back to their hometown is a very uh, limited number, about 10 or 20 percent of such number, mainly because for the infrastructure is not yet coming back. For example, for the, the hospital, the school, and uh, uh, shopping. And so this, uh, it's, I think it's not so uh, optimistic for the, even though the, the decontamination work the, the deployed, it's uh, not so easy. What's the lesson learned of the Fukushima accident? And back to the Three Mile Island accident and the Chernobyl accident, we learned the human factor and safety culture. In the case of the Fukushima accident, we uh, learned about the safety myth. We are. Uh, we had uh, recently the IAEA, the Fukushima report issued. In that report, the safety myth may be that that is uh, one of the reasons. And also, we, uh, uh, we lack of imagination. We have to imagine more, even though it's a very low possibility. We have to learn. We have to imagine, but uh, we do not have such kind of the imagination. And also, the, after the accident, imag emergency preparedness is not well prepared for that. And I think you well know about this uh, safety en enhancement for the after Fukushima. This is the schematic view, and uh, one of the, uh, the most for, uh, <coughs> famous for the sea wall. Sea wall. You can see the sea wall. In the case of the uh, Hamaoka nuclear power station, that was a tube electric power company. Uh, the seawall, the total length of the uh, seawall is uh, 1.5 kilometers and height is uh, 22 meters. Huge concrete structure to protect for the, the tsunami. But no one knows the, the higher than 22 meters, such kind of the tsunami may come, but, but it's maybe it's a very low possibility. But they prepare, the tube electric uh, company prepare, even though the so high, such a huge tsunami come to the, to the attack to the building, the, the building for the doors were watertight, and the necessary equipment was the laid up to the, to the for example, for the uh, electric vehicles and uh, fire engines and and so they can uh, uh, overcome for the, such a situation. And what's the uh, uh, impact of the accident? This is my, my personal opinion. The most serious impact is, my, my view is the loss of public confidence on nuclear power. And also we have to reassess the nuclear safety and uh, and also the public fear on radiation exposure. This might be. This is also a very big impact for, especially for the local people. And also the reassessment of the nuclear policy and energy policy. And next is I would like to talk about the energy situation of Japan. Is I think you well know about that. Uh, you know this uh, Japan is located in Northeast Asia, where it's a geopolitically important region, close to Korea, China, and Russia. And mild weather, sometimes severe typhoon and flood, located high seismicity and volcanic region. 
And next might be the most important, it's no indigenous natural resource, energy resources. Energy self-sufficiency is around 6% without nuclear. This figure is very low compared with other OECD country. And small island country and mostly mountainous and isolated country. This is also very important. Isolated country means no electricity grid, no pipeline network with neighboring countries. Why not? This is, maybe this is a very good question, but in now we have no, uh, no grid, no pipeline. And uh, in, the, in the future, we will have, but we need for more discussion. And lastly, the densely populated and 127 million people and highly industrialized country and GDP is so 5 trillion US dollar per year. That is a few number th uh, three of the, in the world. This is the energy situation in Japan. It's a hist historical trend of electricity consumption. Uh, you can see the, the, the how, how much we consumed. The terawatt hour is around 1,000 terawatt hour we consumed in a year. And the kilowatt hour per capita is around 8,000. This is not so a high value. Maybe this is ab about half of the United States or other countries. And this is uh, the energy policy, the prioritization of the energy policy. Uh, looking back in the past, on the, in 1950s, uh, reconstruction after World War II, and the uh, 1960s, uh, securing the energy supply, that is, uh, Japanese economy's uh, sharply increase. And so the uh, conversion of the fuel, the hydro to coal and oil. The, from 1970, the diversification of energy sources is a very important issue, especially after oil crisis. Oil to gas, nuclear, and coal. And also the energy conservation is also de deployed. From 1990s, the uh, reduction of the uh, greenhouse gas emission is one of the big issues for the for international issue. You know, this uh, UNFCC, the, that was uh, uh, 1994. And from 2000, this, uh, we reach the mature country and uh, the energy consumption is not so increased from this uh, the time. Even. And at that time, it's for the Japanese government uh, the decided for the, the basic energy law, 2002, and pursuing the 3E and liberalization of the electricity market study. And Fukushima action happened. And from that time, it's uh, pursuing S plus uh, safety plus 3E and electricity system reform. Now, this is in the, in the, in the process. And last year, the fourth strategic energy plan was the decided by the cabinet. I would like to talk about that afterwards. This is the energy situation of Japan is compared uh, the, the, from the to 1955. As I mentioned, for the, in 1955, the, uh, the main leaf, we, we depend on the hydropower. And the lead portion is the coal. And the very few is oil. At that time, it's a uh, major the energy source is coal and hydro. And 1965, this, uh, the oil portion is increased. And in 1973, this is just before the uh, oil crisis, the 73.2% is depend on the oil, too much oil dependent. And the 90s, 1979 uh, and 85 that the, we pursued the energy mix, best energy mix. And finally, with the right hand side, you can see 2010, the nuclear is 28.7 and 6, and the uh, next is uh, 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 gas is 29, and uh, coal the 25, and uh, coal in the 7.5, 7, 7 and hydro is uh, 9.7. The compared with other countries, please look on the left hand side is Japan's 2010, and look at the EU, the right hand, uh, right -hand side. Very similar, the configuration. 
the EU and Japan is very similar. The other countries like the United States is uh, very much depend on the coal, and China is mostly 80% depend on coal. This is a, a typical daily energy demand change. This, in Japan, is, uh, demand is uh, very much changeful. In the peak demand will uh, happen in the summertime around uh, 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And the base load is nuclear power and hydro and coal and LNG and oil and pumping power this, uh, using these combination of the, of the energy source. We supply, we secure the supply of the energy. The, this is the nuclear history of the nuclear development of Japan. Is uh, the starting is uh, 1953 Atmos of Peace, and Japan's uh, officially started the nuclear program in 1955. Atomic Energy Basic Act of Japan is enacted, and AEC started and Jerry started in 1956, and JIF also, our organization started in 1956. And uh, 2010, uh, we have the 54 units, 30 BWR and 24 PWRs, and total capacity is 49 gigawatt. And now it's 43 uh, units and 42 gigawatt. Uh, this is a nuclear pro uh, development program. There's a prioritization of nuclear development. There are from 2000, uh, 1955, the mainly for the preparation for introduction of the nuclear power. And uh, from 1970, this uh, deployment of the nuclear power is the first generation of light water reactor study operation. And uh, until 1985, we established the indigenous technology, promote localization and improvement of standardization program that was uh, supported by the government and the development of the advanced light water reactor. And from 1985, this is my view, 1985, there's a promotion of a recycle policy. The, until that time, we are mainly focusing for the construction of the nuclear power plant. And after that, we change it for the main uh, target to the, for the recycle or the back end cycle. This is a development history of the nuclear power, uh, mainly in the in, uh, improvement and the standardization program. The, the lower portion you can see, the phase one and the phase two and the phase three, we have uh, fully supported by the government and uh, we develop our indigenous technology. When we, uh, we started the, the first generation of nuclear power plants, we encountered so many troubles. I myself, my history, my experience, mainly how to tackle, how to resolve the, the so many troubles, not so big trouble, mainly for the uh, weldment, for the, the pipe, for <clears throat> so many, many troubles. And based on this, uh, the, the feedback of this uh, experience, we establish more reliable, the more uh, cost-effective and uh, technology. I will talk afterwards. This is the history of the Japan nuclear development. I, uh, sorry, is your your is uh, <laughs> white and black, and you can you cannot see it. But, but anyway, uh, this is uh, you can see it in Japan. This uh, we from uh, 1960, we are continuously construction of the nuclear power plant. We never the, in, uh, interrupt with this until 2010 was the timing. And the, the length of the bar chart is the construction time. The, this the length is uh, relatively very short compared with other countries, especially in the compared with the uh, uh, United States in the uh, early 80s war. And it's a very, very uh, uh, short term construction time. This is the energy policy. Uh, you well know about that. Uh, sim the basic principle of the Japanese uh, uh, energy policy is simultaneous achievement of 3E and pursuing the best mix 
and after Fukushima is uh, S plus 3E, the safety on the premise of safety, 3E on the premise of safety. And also for the nuclear, securing 3S, this is also very important. Safety, safeguards, and security is a basic principle. This is the energy policy of the energy mix. The before that is the fourth strategic energy plan of Japan was decided and the position of the nuclear power is important base load power source. And restart nuclear power plants after safety assessment by NRA. This is very easy to understand. But next statement is very confused and very politi politically decided. Dependency on nuclear power will be lowered in the future. And finally, the energy mix was decided this July. And you can see the right hand side in the 2030s, the nuclear power, the around 20 or the 22 percent, and the renewable 22 to 24 percent, and the rest is the thermal power, 56, 6 percent. And CO2 emission was decreased, lowered, compared with 2013. This is also the very politically decided the difference here. And uh, the 26 percent decrease compared with 2013. 2013 is no nuclear power operation. And so very uh, big amount of the CO2 was emitted. But compared with that, it's uh, very politically decided. And next is the uh, restarting. You might be uh, interested in this area. Uh, you know there's 43 nuclear power plant and uh, construction is, uh, this officially con uh, under construction is three nuclear power plants, all ABWR, and the 14 units were shut down for decommissioning. And uh, this year, this August, the uh, center number one restarted. But at present time, how many units and when can restart is unknown. This is official. Uh, comment on me. <laughs> uh, next is uh, current status for nuclear power plant. Uh, I think you well know about that. I will skip. And the, what's the effects of the shutdown of the nuclear power plant? This is also well known. Pa power supply. And many times I would ask from the overseas uh, the, uh, countries the how do you, do you uh, assure the energy supply. The my, my answer is the restarting age fossil plant. This is um, my, uh, my question. The next question is, why so many age fossil plant you keep? <laughs> this, this is a very good question. But we, the utility company, has about 20 or 25 percent the surplus for the, the energy uh, supply capability. But these are very, very uh, unreliable and very high risk for the, the compared, uh, considering for the stable energy supply. And biggest impact is additional cost is 3.37 trillion uh, Japanese yen. This is about this, uh, 100 million uh, dollars per day. It's a huge amount. The CO2 emission increased about 10%. And the electricity rate changed about 25% for household and 40% for industry. This is uh, the history of the Sendai. I, I think you will know about that. If you have any question after that, I will answer. This might be that you are very interested in that. And uh, the right hand side, the send, you can see the Sendai 1 has already started. And next is the Sendai 2. The last weeks, the Kyushu Electric Power Company officially announced uh, they will uh, start for the Sendai 2 uh, next week. And uh, the, the Sendai 2 will the next step. And the next is the Takahama 3 and 4 and the Ikata 3. These are, and also the Genkai 3 and 4 and the OE 3 and 4 and the Tomari. These and the red or pink colored, all the, these are PWR. And the left hand side is Kashiwada Kariwa. This is a top runner of the BWR. And Onagawa 2, Hamaoka 4, and the Shimane, 3, Shimane 2. And white uh, color, that is uh, the very, very uh, just studied for the, the assessment uh, process. It takes uh, more time. 
This is my view in the 2030s. M maybe it's, uh, is it possible, feasible to supply 20 or 22 percent of the by nuclear? This, my view, is uh, if some of the unit can extend the, the, ex the operation time, operation period, we can uh, supply 20 or 22 percent. This figure shows this uh, left hand side, the red bar chart, is we have now the 42 gigawatt, and out of 42 gigawatt, the 43 units out of 42 gigawatt, 23 uh, gigawatt, 25 units reached uh, 40 years, uh, when 2030. And uh, conservatively, we have to uh, shut down all these unit. This is the yellow bar chart show this, this, this mean. And we have to start from the 19 gigawatt, 18 units. And plus, some of the unit, the extent, the orange color, is uh, extension uh, 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 X gigawatt, alpha unit. And now under construction, three unit, four gigawatt, green portion. And finally, uh, the, the blue one is 19 plus X plus four gigawatt. And we have to, uh, this value should be the in between for the 28.6 to 31.4, around 30. And so X should be seven. X should be seven. That seven units, seven is around seven units, such number. This might be feasible. That's my view. And this is uh, the, one of one of the assumptions, this uh, the total power total power demand is uh, thousand terawatt hour in 2030, and the nuclear generation capacity capacity factor capacity factor is 80 percent. Based on these assumption, the X uh, should be seven, and the seven or ten or such numbers. This is also the very important factor, the current, uh, the looking at the current in, uh, the energy policy or the nuclear policy. In these uh, two years, we are uh, following uh, the opinion poll, the different mass media. Uh, left hand side, you can see this was uh, based on the Asahi, Nikkei, Yomiri, and NHK. And these data is in these two years is no change. The, the question is, do you support nuclear power plants restart after NRA approval? The base, uh, to on this uh, question, about 55 to 60 percent people is against, and about 30 to 35 percent is uh, support. And the difference between two is about 20 percent. This is a big difference big difference. And so okay. we have to consider this situation. The current Abe administration is carefully looking at these data. This is my view. And the new, how about the nuclear? We are, uh, I talked uh, until now this uh, mostly in Japanese situation. But uh, I would like to talk about for the, how about the, in the world? Now we have the about 443 units and uh, th uh, 396 gigawatt, and we are operating 30 countries. It's a very limited number. Now to these, the United States, France, Japan, Russia, Korea, China, India, Canada, uh, UK, and Ukraine, and Sweden, and Germany. These are big for the developed countries. Out of these, uh, Sweden and Germany is now in this, they, they decided to phase out from nuclear. And we, are under, we have uh, almost 70 units under construction, mainly in China, and we have the planning, many plan, uh, planning units, and many shutdown for the commissioning is about 150 units. And generated power by nuclear is about 11%, uh, 11%, not so big. In the world, uh, average. 11%. And this is uh, current operational uh, reactors age. You can see the peak is age is uh, 30 or 31 years old. It's almost 30 years. This is uh, 
the average, the operating year is uh, ve almost 30 years. How about in the, in the future? Now we can see the now it's at 394 gigawatt in 2014. And looking in the future, 2030 and 2040. And we have three scenario. Now this is the green one is the current policy scenario. This is the current policy. And the new policy scenario is a little bit the considering for the global warming, the little bit for the changing, the shifting from more uh, green power for to introduce. And two degree C scenario, this is uh, uh, to cope with the greenhouse gas emission, to cope with the current, to, um, to changing the current trends, we have to uh, challenge this target. The COP20, 21 is based on this scenario, but it's not so easy for to, to construct for the, this huge amount of the nuclear power plant. And maybe the new policy scenario, maybe the more uh, uh, practical there. And the looking at this figure, and from 2014 to 2040, about 150 gigawatt will, re will retire, and the new construction is 380. The, when the 380 divided by in these the 25 years, we have to construct every year about 20 units or such huge uh, 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 units we have to construct. Is it feasible or not? That is the question. This is uh, the graph of the, the new policy scenarios. You can see, as I mentioned, the yellow is uh, the nuclear. The 12% is uh, depend on nuclear. And 2040s, the still uh, not so high, the nuclear portion. But nuclear will steadily increase uh, the capacity but mostly increase for the renewables and coal and gas. And next question is how can we develop the, the nuclear power in the, uh, from now on in the, from the future? There are many issues. The first is the nuclear safety, how to assure the nuclear safety. And next is the radioactive waste disposal. This is also very big. And also the proliferation and security risk. And, and the financial risk is also a big issue, especially for the newcomer countries, how to assure the finance. And also the human resource development. I am very concerned about that, especially in China. Now they are constructing 26 units. Can they prepare for the well trained the human resources with safety culture it's not so easy based on my experience and also finally the pub without public support we cannot develop nuclear power this is also very very important this is very much related to the the upper the, the challenges especially radioactive waste disposal and nuclear safety And from now on, this, I will skip the, uh, the, I would like to talk about the Jap Japan technology. The, this is the strength of Japan technology. The next point is, uh, the next, second point may be the biggest uh, Japanese for strength, project management capability of the on time, on budget. This might be most important to keep the current, the financial, the, the challenge. And the nuclear industry, the also the Japan's way, this is also very unique. The safety first, quality first, this is very important. And test before use, this is also very uh, important. And project management, and the modular construction method, and teamwork. And you, you well know about is the Toyota ways, the 5S, workplace methodology of organization, say the Satons, they saw this kind of very, very unique Japanese approach. And finally, I'd like to talk about the international cooperation, but uh, as I mentioned for the GICC, JIC, 
We are fully supported by the government and supported for the newcomer countries. We several times, I myself, several times going abroad, uh, and I talked to Japanese for the, the history and the Japanese way of business. And uh, when the Fukushima accident happened, at that time, I was on the plane, just coming back from Jordan. And uh, I cannot uh, the, uh, landing and Narita. I uh, land, landing at Kansai Airport. And uh, next day, I coming back to Tokyo. This is uh, one of the uh, important area of the human resource development. We Japan for the uh, human resources development network. We uh, we started this framework for the 2010, and fully supported for the young people for the education and training, with uh, the cooperation with international organization like IAEA. And uh, this. Uh, network, we are now the 71 uh, the membership. All the, you know, most of the universities and the research institute and the government supported. And before closing, for the, I'd like to talk about for the nuclear, uh, the role of nuclear to combat global warming. Uh, as I mentioned, the world energy demand increase would be inevitable. For sustainable future of the planet, we have to challenge to realize a low carbon society. The next three messages are very important. Nuclear power is mature and available today, and nuclear power is large scale, stable, and reliable. This is very different from the renewables. And nuclear power has played an important role for energy supply assurance and the reduction of CO2 emission within marginal costs. This is also very important. And finally, there is no silver bullet to realize low carbon society, but there would be no solution without nuclear. And as a closing, Japan's commitment to nuclear. Japan will utilize nuclear power as an important base world power and keep nuclear technology to combat global warming and share the lesson learned from the Fukushima accident and enhance safety of nuclear installation in the world and promote the commissioning of the global the damaged reactors of Fukushima in cooperation with international community, the support the nuclear development program of newcomer countries, and contribute to assure the international regime of the non-proliferation and nuclear security. And we will take the lead in the international research and development program of innovative nuclear technology. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hattori-san, for a very comprehensive overview of Japan's uh, nuclear situation. Uh, we'll take question and answers now. Uh, we can take them in Japanese because we have our esteemed interpreter, Takamatsu-san, uh, on, on uh, standby. Um, so I will, I, will open the floor to, I will open the floor to questions. Uh, first of all, from the working press. One question per person and no speeches, please. Thank you. Who'd like to ask a question? My name is Crowell. I'm with Nuclear Intelligence Weekly in New York. Uh, you know, there, as you know, there are three nuclear plants under construction, supposedly, here in Japan. But it's difficult to get information about them. The Chugoku Electric Power Company is very unforthcoming with the new, with any information about Kaminoseki Number Three plant, which supposedly was nearly complete four years ago. And uh, if you could also tell me how far along the Oma plant is, and uh, if there's any active construction really going on with the Higashidori Number One with TEPCO, which had just started, and I we don't so you don't hear very much about any of these three plants. So if you could. Uh, uh, Enlarge on it, I'd appreciate it. <coughs> Thank you for your question. Uh, based on my understanding for the, the Shimane 3, this is the ABWR. The Shimane 3. Shimane, Shimane 3. The, uh, oh, Shimane, no. Yeah, Kaminoseki is not yet started for construction. That is on the planning phase. Shimane, Shimane is a Chugoku Electric Power Company. This is marked on the, the ABWRs and the 
on that for the slide. And the Shimano is uh, mostly finished, about 95% finished. Uh, that was the offici uh, uh, official figure. I don't know if it's 95, 97, or I don't know, <laughs> but, but a lot, uh, more, than, more than 95, I think, my understanding. And the Oma is around 40% finished. And the Higashidori of the TEPCO, Tokyo Electric Power Company, is less than 10% or so. Are they working on it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. This, but not yet for the actual the construction work. They are the, the holding for current situation. The TEPCO's case is very, the, compared with other, other Higashi, uh, the Oma and TEPCO is uh, holding with them. But they do not decide for the, the, the stop for the construction. They, they are now they are keeping for. And uh, I think this, uh, as I mentioned for the, the, the current for the uh, NRAs for the assessment, OMA has, uh, even though these are under construction, they have already uh, uh, submitted for the assessment report. But their construction, the, uh, the, the schedule is announced for the 20, 2021. That, that is the current schedule. And the Shimane 3 is not yet uh, the submit the assessment report. I don't know how the, uh, the Chugoku Electric Power Company are thinking about that. But anyway, mostly Finnish and also the ABWR and uh, so. The, from the viewpoint of the technical uh, the viewpoint, this is very safe and very really, really reliable. And soon they will submit their assessment report and, and uh, reach the construction, reach the, the final stage. But I don't know the, the, their, their schedule, their planning. And so, and next for the very important point is in, in the case of the OMA. OMA is, you know, this uh, so-called full MOX, full, core, full MOX plant, full MOX plant. They consume the, the plutonium. The plutonium stockpile is one of the, uh, the big issues in the Japanese for the nuclear community. How to consume the uh, current accumulated plutonium. And OMA is a full MOX. When they reach the full, mo full core by MOX fuel, they can consume about 1.1 tons per year or such a number. But the, the, they started very the small portion of the MOX. And so after reaching the full MOX, they, they can consume. But anyway, that how to consume the plutonium, that is a big issue. From the, that was uh, from uh, from, the view, from the viewpoint of the non-proliferation and also the relationship between the United States and, and the United States, Japan and the United States cooperation agreement that uh, the, that will come for the 2018 for the the, the, the limit for the 2018 2018 2018 that is uh, the time for the two revise or two. Yeah, Japan and the United States, the cooperation agreement. We have to the, reach the conclusion between Japan and the United States. And so the, the schedule of the OMA construction, very, very important to that, from that viewpoint. Thank you. Who'd like to ask questions, please? Torreson, thank you very much. Um, my name is Neil Newman from GAFCAL in Hong Kong. I just wanted to just follow on from what you're saying about uh, consuming plutonium. Um, in the UK, of course, we have our same, the same plutonium issue, and we have our own nuclear disaster that's still being cleaned up. And I, I read that um, G, uh, Hitachi GE have been promoting PRISM uh, nuclear reactor, which is some new technology that um, consumes plutonium, shuts down in the event of a, an emergency. I was just wondering if there has there been any similar marketing in Japan, and is there possibly a future for that here? Thank you. Yes, and uh, for the future the, uh, research and development, that is also a very important uh, activity. Uh, many ideas coming out, uh, not only is the prism, but other for the uh, 
IFR in the, the high temperature gas cool reactor. That is also very, very good the, the uh, reactor to consume the uh, much for plutonium. But that is uh, in the future. Uh, we, we cannot ask, we can say when. But for the plutonium issue is the next or the next five years or next ten years. The considering that time frame, we cannot depend on such a future reactor. We have to have to consume. At present time, it's only the way by the uh, MOX in, in the light water reactor. You know, in Japan, this, and before the accident, we have we are planning to have the 16 to 18 the reactors and consume for the the plutonium that was generated by the local processing plant, and also we have so much so much stockpiled in the UK and the France. But at present time, this uh, that's such kind of the, uh, uh, planning is uh, very difficult. And so, I'm not sure the, how the government and the utility companies at present time. I myself has my idea, but too sensitive, <laughs> sensitive one. Yeah, and so the, I cannot say today. But, but anyway, that's how to consume the plutonium. We, the Japanese the nuclear community, very concerned about that. That is only I can say. Sorry. Thank you, Tom. Yep. And then you. <coughs> uh, Thomas Sullivan, Matthias Energy, Hattori san Thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Uh, I wanted to ask you about. Um, uh, I understand that public prosecutors in Fukushima Prefecture have decided to pursue a case of negligence negligence against uh, TEPCO and officials at TEPCO. I was just wondering if you could comment on that? Do you think they have uh, a case against your ex-colleagues in TEPCO? あの、福島の、え、検察の方がその、え、元東電の役員、え、たちの過失をこれから追求するっていうような話を聞いてるんでございますが、これについて何かあの、情報をございますでしょうか?お考えございますでしょうか?えっと、それは国際金選手あった話
<coughs> the first question is about for the uh, many the safety culture. I think. I think the current NRA is for the basic for the, the most important uh, aspect for the current new le regulation is uh, based on the, uh, the importance of the safety culture, and so the current for the the new regulation was uh, based on these for the uh, understanding for, and so that this is already the, uh, reflected to the new regulation. And so, uh, from now on, there's, uh, that is not a matter of the NRC, NRA regulation, but the matter of the utility company itself. Management level, not only to the, the management level, but the actual worker level. That is uh, not on the matter of the, not only for the utility company, but all the nuclear related, the, the employees have to uh, have to think about for the more the um, how to how to improve the continuous uh, continuous improvement work. such kind of mind most important and questioning attitude even though the the worker level the daily life daily uh, uh, life we they have to the not just follow the, the the order to feedback to the to the even though the, the even though the very small matter we have to have the question in attitude you know the very famous story for the oling or the the that was Blake that broken in the challenger that was uh, one of the engineer well know about that and they he proposed to the to Stop for the, the the test for the the rocket for the uh, to stop, with. but such kind of information is not for the, not reached to the top management. Such kind of the we have to learn such kind of the uh, uh, experience, and so I think this the Japanese utility companies well know about that, well understand. And now in the process of the changing their mind. And the second question is uh, the その再稼働についてでございますけれど、その銃のその地方地域のえ電力会社にとってこれはどれぐらいその再稼働は重要なえことなんでございましょうか。財務的な面から考えますと。As I mentioned for the on this slide for the the very big impact, but the the cost for to generate power the compared with the uh, thermal power by the, the with nuclear power maybe more than 10 yen per kilowatt hour such such level a very huge amount of money we have to import from import all the necessary for the the fuel by gas or and now gas is uh, the gas price is decreasing, but still Japanese uh, the uh, Japan premium, <laughs> so called Japan premium, the Asian pro premium said this is uh, the very high compared with uh, the cost of the mm. current uh, cost in the United States, and compared with also with uh, European country, it's a v the very high cost for the gas. And so, how to reduce these costs is one of the very important. The task for, and so you know this uh, movement for the TEPCO and the Chubu and jointly they they have new companies for to buy the the gas for them, and so there's a very very big impact for. And so, the Kyushu Electric Power Company they have already started. They they very much improve their current for uh, uh, economical status situation. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
、えー、と2点質問させていただきます最初はちょっとあの SF のようなお話なんですが核廃棄物についての質問ですあの核廃棄物っていうのは、まあ、あのブリーダーリアクターを使っても出てくるもので,でそれは結局こう数千年とか数万年とか保持をしなくちゃいけない管理をしなくちゃいけないんですけども人類の歴史って5000年ぐらいしかないわけですよねで果たしてその数万年もそういうものが管理しきれるかどうかについての先生のご意見を伺いたいというのが一つですだからもう一つはあのこの資料の10ページにあったのに統計値は2010年で終わっておるんですけども2010年以降はどうなっておるのかっていうのをちょっとお教えいただければと思います。So,、oh, my name is Hanjo, and I have two questions.、Uh, first of all, in regard to、uh, nuclear waste,、um, it's said that even breeder reactors, FS breeder reactors, produce、uh, nuclear waste, and this <coughs> nuclear waste takes several thousand or several tens of thousands of years uh, that, uh, to uh, become、uh, harmless. In other words,、uh, human beings are going to have to manage、uh, this nuclear waste for tens of thousands of years. <coughs> But when we look back at human history,、uh, civilization、uh, goes only back to about 5,000 years. So, is it really realistically possible for human beings to be able to? Manage this waste for tens of thousands of years. And the second question is in regard to page 10 of your slide.、Uh, the data ends at、uh, the year、uh, 2010. Can you tell us what the situation is after、uh, 2012? Eh, to Kantan no ho kara, ano, eh, jup page no, kono data desk e r domo, eh, to nakanaka no, eh, koshi no data de desk ne. あの世界の各国と比較できるようなものというのになると、例えば国連のデータがあるものですから、まあ、そういうところと比較をするためにあの持ってきたんですけども、まあ、例えば最近の国連のデータでいいものが、まあ、たまたま見つからなかったもので、えー、もう少し努力をすれば、あの資金のものが見つかるんですけども、その場合には今度、他国と比較するときに、それがまた難しくなってしまうということもあるものですから、えー、すいません、この,この2010年までをまあ最新にしておりますけども、それで、データ的には GDP についてはもう頭打ちというようなところになっていますこれはまたあの為替レートでずいぶん変わってきますので,です、ね、まあ、簡単ではないというところがありますけれども、大体まあ5兆強というのはあの現状だ、5兆ドルパーキロアノアですねぐらいが今のところ、それから GDP キャプパーキャプターのところもまあ人口はそれほど変わってないので、それで割ればいい話ですが、その次の消費電力のところですけれども、2011年以降、えー、だいぶ省エネが進みまして、ですね大体あの1000テラワットワーぐらいで頭打ちに今なっている状況ですで、これから先、これがどうなるかということについても、先ほど私は2030年で1兆あの1000テラワットワーという値を示し,示しましたけれども、政府のデータですと1065というような数字もあるんです。あるんですけど、あんまり2030年のところで細かいところまでやってもしょうがないんで、私は線というだけを使ってるんですけれども、いずれにしましても、これから先行き、日本の消費電力がどのぐらいになるのかについては、日本の産業構造がどうなるか、から人口が約、まあ、毎年25万ぐらい減っていってますから、人口の減りを、それから高齢化社会になることによって電、電力の依存度がより高まるというと。電力の比率が増えるというようなことがありますので、などなどさまざまなファクターが入ってきますので、これも簡単ではないと思います。一番右の,そのキロワットワーパーキャプターのところは、テラワットワーが、まあ、あの消費トータルがいくらになるかという、あとは人口がどうなるかということで決まってきますので、これも大体まあ8000数百というようなところで、まあ、頭打ちの状況になっていると思います。So、ということで、こちらはそのぐらいでよろしいでしょうか。So, I'd like to begin with the second question because it's a little bit easier to、um, explain.、Uh, first of all,、um, the reason I stopped at、uh, 2010 is that、um, afterwards、um, it was very difficult for me to find、um, good data、uh, to use as comparisons.、Um, I was looking at、uh, UN data、uh, previously up to the year 2010, but I really could not find appropriate data that would accurately reflect、uh, the situation.、Uh, in other words, that I could make a, a, a good comparison with Japan.、Um, I think that if I spent a little bit more time, I would be able to find、um, better data and present、um, better. Uh, 
a chart uh, like this, but I can say just in general terms uh, that the GDP um, data probably will not uh, change very much. I think it will basically um, stop at around uh, five trillion uh, US dollars. Um, and if you divide that by the uh, population of that time, you can get to the right-hand column number, which is the kilowatt hour uh, per capita. Uh, and I think, in other words, uh, that this 8,378 is not going to change very much, and that 10,000, excuse me, 1,000 terawatt uh, is also uh, not going to change uh, very much as well. Um, I s said um, that uh, I believe that the 1,000 uh, terawatt uh, hour uh, figure will not change very much, even going up to 2030. There have, I should point out, been some government estimates that say um, 1,065 terawatt uh, hours. But when we talk about something as far distant in the future as 2030, I think these smaller differences are not going to make that much of a difference. The reason for this is that there's so many variables uh, that could change. For example, what will the uh, structure of Japanese industry be? Uh, what exactly will the population um, be of Japan be? We know that um, the population of Japan is decreasing by about 250,000 people per year. So what will be the electricity dependence? Uh, what will be uh, the final electricity makeup? Uh, that is all uh, pretty much going to change. But I believe that uh, 1,000 uh, terawatt figure and then uh, that kilowatt hour uh, capita being somewhere around 8,000, that's not going to change so much. え、ま、え、え、で、え、いくつかのものが残りで、一つの今、
まさにそのトランスサイエンスの世界だというふうに思っています社会的な問題それから地球というものをもういずれにしろ地球の環境の中に入れるわけですからそ,のそれがそのあたあと千年万年後にその,その世代に、えー、何か悪い影響環境への影響人類への影響というものがないようにするにはどうしたらいいのかということを、まあ、世界中の関係者が集まって、まあ、議論をしているんです。でまあ、唯一と言いますか今は地中深く十分管理するような形で、えー、処分すればそれが可能であろうというふうなあところまで来ているということです。まあ、これはまだまだ日本の中でもですね議論をしていく必要があるというふうに思っています。とても大事なあのご指摘をいただきました。ありがとうございます。So, thank you very much for、uh, your second, your first question,、uh, which is actually very, very difficult, but it's a very important question.、Um, in regard to nuclear waste or the radiation toxos- toxicity uh, of uh, the uh, processed、um, uh, fuel,、uh, this is, of course, a huge uh, problem. Uh, of course, uh, um, Uh, uh, uranium exists in the natural world, and, but the toxicity of that、uh, uranium is much, much lower than uh, the, uh, uh, the nuclear waste、uh, that has been produced by nuclear power plants. And in order to raise the、uh, radiation levels of uh, the um, used um, fuel uh, to uh, natural uranium、uh, radiation levels, it will take, as you have pointed out,、uh, several tens of thousands of years. Some people are saying even a hundred thousand years.、Um, and uh, of course, uh, We're talking about、uh, spent fuel that has already been processed、uh, to some extent,、uh, fuel that has been um, um, uh, transformed in shape into glass、uh, particles.、Um, And certainly,、uh, in regard to this,、uh, several tens of thousands of years, going up to even 100,000 years,、uh, researchers throughout the world are trying to develop technologies to shorten that time.、Uh, and one way to deal with this p- potential problem、uh, is to use fast breeder reactors. Of course, until now, in the past, fast breeder reactors were thought of as a way to uh, produce uh, energy effectively using、um, spent fuel.、Uh, however,、um, the way that fast breeder reactors are being looked at now is slightly different throughout the world. It is、uh, thought to be a way that、uh, we can shorten. That time、uh, in which、uh, the spent fuel can be made、uh, less toxic quicker.、Um, but、uh, the point is、uh, that there are great expectations held by many、uh, for researchers、uh, throughout the world、uh, as to how much they can shorten the time for, to bring down toxicity levels or radiation levels to、uh, natural u- uranium radiation levels. Some people are optimistic in saying maybe 8,000 years.、Uh, some people are very, very optimistic in saying even several hundreds、uh, of years. But in any event,、uh, for the time being at least,、uh, we are talking about、uh, time on the scale of thousands or tens of thousands of years. And certainly I understand what you're saying is that something,、uh, given、uh, the shortness, the brevity of、uh, human history in the past, is that something truly possible for human beings to do in the future?、Uh, so for now, the、uh, answer, the provisional answer that is being given by people throughout the world is to bury it. Of course,、um, process and, and the fuel、mm-hmm. as much as possible, but then to bury it very, very deep underground. And、um, although uh, you mentioned uh, the idea of、uh, human beings being able to, humankind basically、uh, managing this、uh, spent、uh, fuel for tens of thousands of years, by burying it,、uh, what we're really doing is.、Uh, Transferring the management to the earth,、uh, to the planet.、Uh, in other words, basically、um, asking、uh, the planet to take, to take over this responsibility because human beings may not be able to. At the same time, however,、uh, there is also、um, being given、uh, being great consideration、uh, the possibility of ensuring that、uh, even though that field is buried, that there will always be some option to re. Take it out of the earth, retake it out of the earth, because in the future it might be that、um, technology advances and、uh, that fuel will be able to be taken out of the earth and reprocessed and made harmless or very quickly. Or if there is some kind of an accident, some kind of an emergency situation, again,、uh, to be able to have the option of being able to. Uh, Uh, take it out of the earth is going to be very, very important. Uh, so, um, in a sense, because this is not only a, a question for scientists, it becomes a societal problem, it becomes a glo- global problem.、Uh, the biggest question facing us、uh, today is how can we prevent harm from coming to future generations? It is not something uh, that uh, people have come to an agreement about. This burying the fuel in the earth is one option,、uh, the only option that we're seeing right away,、uh, but it is not the only option, and there isn't f-、uh, final consensus, not only in Japan, but、um, Throughout the world.、Yeah, it is a topic of a great debate.、Uh, take a question from this gentleman over here, and then <coughs> this gentleman at the back, and then you.、Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Taiwi. My name is Patrick Walter. I'm with Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung German Daily. Uh, I have a question. Can you, can you give us any number how much the decommissioning and the clean up of the Fukushima accident, what are the costs? Who is bearing, who is paying for these costs? Is it TEPCO or how much is given by the government or the taxpayer? And after Fukushima, are there any preparations in other utilities to prepare for a situation like that in order to sh shoulder costs like that maybe in future times? Thank you. <coughs> the cost for the decommission in the Fukushima Daiichi, the, the, you know, there's the three damage core that was uh, Fukushima Daiichi, one, two, three. And number four is uh, heavy damage for the building itself. And so the cost of the, uh, and also the unit five and six, uh, the Fukushima Daiichi five and six is not damaged, but there's, uh, the surrounded area is heavily contaminated. And not so easy for the, the, the two for the commissioning of these reactors, especially in the case of the unit one, two, three, and four. And the cost of these uh, the commissioning is the, the, the paid by TEPCO, the current, for, based on the current for the, <coughs> The um, current for the the how to decision yeah the, based on the current decision and the TEPCO has already the the estimating for the how much for it takes for the the order of the trillion yen the total yeah I don't know the how much for that. And other reactors, other normal, the normal the decommissioning fee, that is uh, already the each utility company has accumulated for the as a fund for the for the commissioning fee, that is uh, proportional to the, the generated power, that was based on the the law, the accumulated, and the total, the cost that the cost of the decommissioning is roughly speaking about is. Uh, for example, uh, the thousand the megawatt hours class such kind of the reactors is uh, uh, 60 billion Japanese yen or such number. But I think this, th that cost is estimated in the uh, more than 10 years ago. And so it should be the device for the uh, related, related cost. But anyway, for the, that is not so high. <coughs> And also, these, uh, the, the work is not so difficult compared with the, the Fukushima Daiichi case. The mainly for the, the not, so, not so much for the newly developed one. The, the fact that the, the area we have to improve is how efficiently the decommission and how, how to reduce the radiation exposure for the worker how to introduce for the, the robot for the how to to perform the more efficient real and next for the issue is how to treat the generated uh, radioactive waste that was uh, the, in the process of the decommissioning at present time this uh, japan's regulation is not well prepared for that and now in the process of the the new regulation for the how to treat the decommissioning waste the waste of the, that was generated by the decommissioning process. Is that answer your question? Can you talk about the costs of the clean up of the Fukushima area? Uh, the clean up is, uh, that is uh, very much related to the regulation. <laughs> and so this how, and also the, the clean up with that was uh, the nuclear power station, the, the, that territory is, uh, I, I don't know this uh, also, I, I don't know the exact for the number, but the, the order of the trillion, trillion yen board. And so totally for the 10 trillion yen for the, the decommissioning and the clean up for the, my uh, understanding is such order. No, I'm not sure. That. Koji Igarashi, freelance journalist. Um, 
following question, quick question, uh, but previous part one. Okay, uh, let me speak in Japanese. あの放射あ核廃棄物の二、えー、つ前の質問にフォローアップしたいんですが、あのー、今ね実現可能なあ核廃棄物の処理方法は地中深く埋めることだとするならばそれを数百年なのかもしくはまあ千年なのか十万年なのかですね。実際に埋めておける場所日本の核廃棄物を埋めておける場所を日本国内もしくは日本の国外のどこかに確保できることを私たちが予測可能な将来に実現できると服部さんは思いですかもしできるとしたらどういう可能性が考えられますかそれを伺いたい。So I'm a freelancer and I'd like to ask about the nuclear waste、uh, question, which was mentioned a few questions ago.、Um, you said that、uh, the only、uh, feasible answer,、uh, the only possibility that uh, is uh, considered, being considered seriously at present is to bury this nuclear waste very deep into the earth.、Uh, whether for it's going to be for several hundreds of years or several thousands of years or even up to a hundred thousand years,、uh, in any way it's going to be a very, very long time. So my question is.、Um, Do you think in the foreseeable future that we will be able to find a place of, within Japan or perhaps outside of Japan where this nuclear waste can truly be、uh, buried?、Uh, and if so, where might that place be? This is a very difficult question, so I will answer it in Japanese. Now, the government has been doing this in the case of the nuclear waste and the nuclear waste. 調べるような作業が行われていて、それほど遠くない将来に日本の中に、えー、日本の中にもまあ複数箇所といいますか、かなりの数のことをまあ言われていると思いますね、まあ十数十、十数箇所になるのか、何十箇所になるのか分かりませんけれども、1箇所、2箇所というようなものではなくてです、ね、日本の中にそういう敵地を見つけられるという技術的な、えーなんて言いますかね、根拠を今、一生懸命詰めて、まもなくそういうものが公表されると思います、ただ、この立地問題ということになりますと、非常にセンシティブなものですから、まあ、そういう問題を、えー、十分配慮しながら、えー、そういう敵地が日本の中にたくさんあるということの発表が、おそらく行われることになろうかと思います。えー、ただ、これはあの先ほど私が申し上げましたように、純技術的な問題だけで済む問題じゃないんですね。でこの廃棄物を処理処分するということの持つ意味合いについて、もっと国民的な議論が深まって、それで、えー、ようやくこれが、まあ、どこかに、日本の中でどこかに見つける必要があるというレベルまでいって、さて、それのうちにどこにするかと、まあ、そういういくつかのステップを踏みながら、えー、前に進んでいく必要があるというふうに思っています。で日本の中にはなければ、それじゃあ海外にというのは、これも、えー、これまで何度も出てきた話なんです。えー、何もその先ほど私は地球上等に申し上げたのでそういうふうに考えてみると何も日本,の日本はその普通考えればこれだけの火山地帯で地震地帯でこういうところには敵地が見つけられないんじゃないかという漠然とした不安がありますしそれよりももっと敵地があるんじゃないかと地球上でということはいつも議論が出るんですが現状の国際的な条約といいますか廃棄物の処理処分をその自国内で行うというのが、まあ、国際的なある意味の約束事になっているものですから、この問題についてもこれからの議論のによってです、ねえー、どうするのかということが、えー、少し進展があるかもしれません、ただそちらにだけ海外に持っていけばいいじゃないかというふうにも、えー、そこで考えてしまうのはあまりにも安易な話だと思います。まあ、例えばヨーロッパでですね、えー、EU の中で今、28ですか、EU 将軍、その中で14ぐらいの国が、原子力をやってるんですがそれぞれの国に、えー、放射性廃棄物の処理処分地を見つけるというのはあまり得策ではないと思うんですね合理的ではないと思うんですヨーロッパぜせっかく EU というものがあるんだからヨーロッパ全体で考えてみたらどうかというのは当然出てくる話だと思いますですからそういうところの議論だとかですねそういうものも十分踏まえながらその国際的な処理処分についてはこれからの問題だというふうに思ってますということで最初の問題も今あのまだ途上でありますが、えー、単に技術的な問題ではないと思う、えー、これからのもっと議論が必要だと、えー、海外のところについては、確かにそういう議論はあるけれども、え
今の現状ではそれが国際条約上難しいということと、将来の可能性を完全に捨ててしまうのは、私は現状では問題といいますか、得策ではないと思っています。あのこれまで,です、ね、南極の氷の下に持っていったらです、ね、どうかとかです、ね、あるいはシベリアの話が出てみたりです、ね、あるいはもっとその、えー、途上国でほとんど開発の見通しがないと思われるようなところの国々の名前が上がったことはありますけれども、えーそれ、そういう話がポッと出ると、当然のことなら反対運動が起こるんですね、ですからなぜそうなのかというその前段の議論をもっと進める必要があると思っています。すみませんちょっと長くなりました<笑> Um, thank you very much.、Uh, it's a difficult question, so I'd like to answer Japanese.、Uh, first of all,、uh, the government, as you know,、uh, is trying to、uh, do research and、uh, try to identify several sites within Japan、uh, that might be a final disposal a site for、uh, this nuclear waste. And I believe that as a result of their efforts, not too far in the future, there will be an official announcement by the government、uh, that will list,、um, announce uh, uh, several possibilities for disposal sites. And it will not just be one or two possibilities, but、um, many. Uh, sites uh, that, from a technical point of view,、uh, could be、um, considered、uh, appropriate or adequate uh, uh, places for this nuclear waste to be、um, buried. Um, I think whether it will be over 10, whether it will be several tens of sites,、uh, I'm not quite sure, but it will not be as, as small as one or two、uh, possible sites.、Um, so、uh, I think, as I mentioned earlier, the government is in the process of doing research and trying to build、um, a case for explaining why these uh, sites are、um, appropriate uh, sites. But at the same time, as you all know,、uh, this is a very, very、uh, politically sensitive issue, and many different considerations、uh, can be, must be taken into account so that when the announcement comes, 場所は地方とか。Problem. As I mentioned earlier, this is not just simply a technical issue.、Uh, it is an issue that involves all of society, and therefore, the, when we consider the significance of this、uh, problem, I think we need a more、uh, debate within all of、uh, society. Um, certainly,、uh, the idea of trying to find a place、uh, within Japan,、uh, we need first of all a consensus that eventually,、uh, because we did produce this waste, we do need to somehow dispose of it and we need to do, take responsibility for it. And、uh, the idea would therefore be that the consensus would be in Japan that we would try to find a place for it within Japan. And you mentioned earlier、uh, the possibility of finding a place outside of Japan. This is also a possibility that has been uh, repeatedly um, raised in the past, and、uh, certainly、uh, for very uh, um, justifiable reasons. The fact that、uh, Japan archipelago lies in a volcanic、uh, region of the earth. Perhaps Japan, anywhere in Japan, is not the best place、uh, on, uh, on earth to bury such waste. But at the same time, Japan is a signatory to various international treaties.、Uh, and in regard to the、uh, disposal or management of nuclear waste,、uh, fundamentally, according to international treaties and international understanding, it is considered the responsibility of the country producing、mm -hmm. the nuclear waste to basically take care of that nuclear waste. So,、um, on, although I'm not dismissing the The possibility that eventually this nuclear waste that Japan produces could be、uh, buried somewhere else in the world.、Um, at present,、uh, I think、uh, that is too simple an answer.、Uh, and although various countries in the past have been named, for example, Antarctica,、uh, Siberia, some emerging nations where it seems that there will not be much development in the future, of course, whenever such problems, which names are,、um, are raised, there's always opposition、uh, voices raised as well.、Uh, it's only natural because we have to first deal with this issue、um, as a society and come to a final decision. First. At the same time, we see what、uh, is happening in other nations of the world. The EU is composed of maybe 28 countries, and of, of that, those 28 countries or so,、uh, about half of them, about 14, uh, actually uh, use uh, nuclear power plants. Uh, and uh, to expect that only the 14 countries take responsibility for that nuclear waste and bury it on their territories is perhaps not necessarily the, base, the best answer. After all, you do have this larger organization, the EU. It might be that、um, although there are countries、uh, within the EU that That don't actually produce the nuclear waste, they would be more appropriate for disposing,、um, acting as final disposal sites for、uh, the nuclear waste. In other words, there are debates going on、uh, in international,、uh, on the international stage as well, and we should take note of those、uh, international discussions as we debate what to do、uh, within our own nation.
name is Kurt Sieber. I'm an associate member. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I'd like to come back for a moment to the OMA plant. And um, a few months ago, I don't remember how many months ago, we had the mayor of Hakodate City here to make a presentation about Hakodate City uh, filing a lawsuit against the OMA plant because Hakodate City is within the 30 kilometer range uh, from the location of the plant. At the same time, there are also uh, legal hurdles with other plants, uh, just as an example, Takahama, for instance. Um, district courts in different uh, prefectures are making quite different judgments based on, uh, well, certainly facts, but also uh, the, um, the feeling of the uh, inhabitants in the area. So my question to you is, um, to what extent do you think that these legal hurdles as a whole uh, will have an influence on the uh, energy mix in the sense um, uh, to what extent can the percentage 20 to 22 percent in the government uh, plan uh, can that be influenced by legal hurdles? Thank you. <coughs>え、まあ、整理できてないと言いますか。え、え、必ずしもそのサポーティブな意見がま、あの、もらえてないような状況のまま、え、いろんなものとがま、進んでいるところがあります。ということで、え、先ほど私が20ないし22%と言ったところで、個々のその立地権の状態についての、え、なんて言
truly been addressed enough uh, is the fact that uh, the evacuation um, zone around nuclear power plants have been increased after the Fukushima uh, accident from 10 kilometers uh, to 30 kilometers. And <coughs> that means that there are many, many more other uh, municipalities, um, prefectures, etc., cetera, um, residential um, areas uh, that are being affected. And uh, this problem has not truly been addressed. And yet, in spite of that, uh, the government and nuclear power plant, uh, nuclear, uh, excuse me, electric uh, utility companies are going forward with trying to get uh, the uh, plants restarted. And that, that, I think, is the heart of uh, the problems uh, that we are seeing uh, today. Uh, I, that's at least my personal opinion. Uh, you pointed out specific examples about the Oma plant and the Takahama plants. Uh, the Takahama plants, um, not only do they have uh, problems with the courts, uh, that there are several lawsuits uh, that are uh, in place that are, are being, uh, that are progressing, but uh, not only that, they have not been able to successfully get the full out support of uh, local governments, uh, whether they are municipalities or prefectural governments uh, in the area. And in spite of the fact, again, uh, that uh, in spite of the fact that they have not been able to get this kind of support, in, in spite of the fact that they have not been able to address all of the concerns that residents have about proper evacuation, uh, emergency procedures, still uh, the government is moving forward uh, with trying to restart these plants. And I think that is very, very uh, problematic indeed. And yes, as you have pointed out, I have not taken into account all of these difficulties that uh, each plant or reactor is having with its local uh, residents, uh, residential uh, groups uh, in giving this figure of 20 to 22 percent. Whether that's achievable or not really needs to be looked at in more detail, taking all of these factors uh, into account. Um, I believe that it all depends on uh, how much, uh, how successful one is in being able to convince a local residents that uh, enough safety precautions have been taken, that there are preventive emergency measures put into place. And it also means that the national government must show its commitment in a credible way. Um, it must show that in a way uh, that's believable that it is prepared to take on responsibility and action uh, for uh, something uh, that if uh, something occurs. And I think the government still has not yet done that and is simply moving forward with the restarting. And that's what's causing these problems. I'm sorry that my, uh, uh, my comments are very, very vague, but I personally share with you uh, these concerns. Okay, well, we're out of time. So thank you very much for um a very comprehensive presentation and um, attempting to answer all the questions. Um, there's one thing left for me to do. We normally give our speakers one year's honorary membership, but uh, Hattori-san is a member of the FCCJ. <laughs> <laughs> so we will give him a bottle of wine. Thank you for your <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very nice. I appreciate Thank you.